have to tell my story. So there are various versions to it. But um, when I was in college, Nirmala Niketan College of Social Work, MSW was a kind of theme introduced to me. And there, there used to be these faculties, guest speakers who would come like this, stand on a dais and talk bravely about how they have been dealing with uh, issues of rural India, especially in terms of immense poverty, illiteracy, people migrating just for the sake of survival or uh, the issues that a woman and a child face, the apathy of the rural India altogether inspired me and made me move my diversions towards working in rural areas. So at the age of 22, I got geared up and uh, I was sent to Mukhara. Mukhara is a tribal block in Thani district earlier, now in Palghar district. And uh, there was a college run project called Arohan, started in 2006. I was sent as a student uh, social worker for an assignment. But when I went over there, I decided I might take it up as a job. And I became the uh, project officer for Arohan at the tender age of 22. What I had is just passion. I felt now since I have started so early, I would change things and you know, this, this place won't be like this. And uh, we were focusing on health and education, children are dying. Uh, it was really difficult for me to take it up uh, because uh, I used to get up sometimes with phone calls saying that there's a death happened, there's a, you know, some, some pregnant woman uh, getting into a miscarriage whom I had just seen like two days back or something. It was very painful. Then I started moving into villages, of course, Mukhara being a tribal block. And, you know, I met a woman once whose uh, son was affected with scabies. You know, so entire skin disease. And, and I was trying and explaining her that, listen, you have to bathe your child, you know. The child cannot survive. She was so aggressive upon me and she told me, do you even know from where I get the water? I don't have water to drink and you're telling me a luxury to do. That is what I, it was a, you know, harsh fact for me. I felt very bad. What am I, I mean, I'm actually committing a sin by telling her to bathe her child, whereas I was doing no wrong as such. Uh, I thought that, you know, this is something very shocking because I remembered that same uh, a guest speaker and the problems that he spoke still existed in our country just three hours away from Bombay and that was still more disappointing that how and when all these things would be changing. What we did is we as a team sat down again, look, re-looked into what's happening, you know, what are we doing exactly? And uh, there were two to three things we were not doing into our intervention. One is that we were giving a very simple solution, a linear solution. Achha, aapke paas pani nahi hai. So, we bund bana dete. You know, if you don't have work, we have a livelihood. Shuru kar lete. If you don't have water, uh, if you don't have, a, uh, you know, if there's a malnourished child, start a nutrition program. Now, we understood that this is not the case. All these issues are connected somewhere. Okay, so if a child doesn't have food to eat and we give him nutrition supplement today, what about tomorrow? What is going to happen with him or with his family? They have to migrate finally because there is no work. So once they leave, your nutrition program stands still and you will then give the figures of how many drop out because there were migration. So just from the program sake, it was okay. But what kind of change are we really making? That was the issue uh, we grappled. So we understood that we are not going to look into these issues in silos. We have to look and accept the fact that these are complex issues and we have to come with a combination of solutions. Secondly, we understood that, what about sustainability? You know, like when the fact was mentioned, what when we move away from Mukhara, what when I leave Mukhara, what when funding stops, what is going to happen with this program? So sustainability is something that was lacking in our program. And the third important part which I feel was whether the action plans that we used were devised by us using our MSW car knowledge and you know all this, or whether they were derived from the people. And we realized that it was somewhere planned by us. We felt that is important. We felt this is important. And then that was taken to the people and made them understand that this is very important. And the people told us, no, no, we have to take water, it's very important. So, you know, so the action plans need to come from the people. Their priorities have to be there in the sense. 
So with this, we developed a intervention plan where we do three things. So one thing is how do we enter the village? So while entering, we conduct an exercise where we list down the priorities of the village and mark them. Okay, so the people themselves mark them that this is our most pressing issue and we see the connections of that pressing issue with the other parameters. That is one thing that we do. Secondly, what do we do? You know, after entering the village, what is it that we do? So second thing is we make action plans along with the people. And the third is how do we exit? So while exiting, we create a system or a process within the village so that our work continues even if we move out. Or, you know, maybe the system is there in place, maybe it will change, but I, there is at least some system. For example, the Gram Sevak visiting the village every month or every week. That is a system that we create and we leave. So, you know, at least that thing continues. Uh, we have already exited almost three villages out of six that we have been working and I would like to share the story of Amle. This Amle was a very tiny village of 55 households, non-electrified, alcoholic people, child marriage, water bond diseases, epidemics, no lively opportunities, so migration was rampant, almost 90% of the people would migrate. What was resourceful yet a problem was that the village was surrounded by three sides on, by a river. The people had never seen the potential of the river, they had seen the river as a problem because they, they did not have a bridge or approach road. So they just couldn't cross that place and move out nor any of the people would want to come over there because during monsoons the village was totally cut off. So no Anganwadi, no Gram Sevak would ever want to visit the village. When I met the people of Amle, they told me, listen, we want to boycott the elections because none of the elected representatives have even looked upon us. So then we conducted our PRA and we realized that, you know, the important pressing problem here is that it was also a non-electrified village I mentioned. So, if we bring up electricity, maybe things would change at a faster rate. And so we put up, now bringing in light would also mean putting up solar lamps. But we thought more deeply and we got into an intervention where we put up a solar hub of 12.5 kilowatts, which now supports the electrification of the households, street lights, but more importantly, it goes ahead and supports the irrigation for the people. That means the migration has reduced. We could put up a water filter unit based upon the water pumping system, which means the water bond diseases has gone down. And the best part is, now the people have electricity in their own homes. You know what happened? The people started trusting us. Now that was the point when we came in and said, okay, so now you have to pass an anti child marriage resolution and they agreed. Amle became one of the first villages to pass the anti-child marriage resolution put up by the adolescent girls or we told them to pass an anti-alcoholism you know and today it is a malnutrition free uh, you know the first girl ever passing 10th in Amle was just last year. We got a woman entrepreneur who has just now received a Shiv Gaurav Puraskar for agriculture okay. Migration has been prevented to an extreme extent and not only that but now the people you know could help the I mean could demand from the MLA for the bridge and they got it done in three years. So now the village has, yeah, the village has changed completely for all these years and just three years of a planned intervention with a process that can be taken back and forth, but along with the people has made lot of changes. Now, uh, today they are functioning well because we could strengthen the committees over there and they are taking up the work. Trust me, I no longer or none of our staff goes to Amle, but you can go and visit Amle anytime and see the changes. Thank you.